NSW, what's the worst thing that's happened at your family gathering? Was celebrating an uncle's birthday and we realized about 15 minutes into it that grandma died. Everyone lost their mind, because she was 75 and seemed fine 10 minutes before. Died of a massive brain aneurysm. Whole family was devastated. I still took some cake. Christmas dinner. Grandpa picked up something at the store that wasn't what grandma asked for. Grandma threw frozen chicken at grandpa's head. Grandpa ducked. Chicken hit glass patio door, shattering it. Police were called. Children were quickly taken and driven home. And grandma wonders why most of the family doesn't make much of an effort to stay in touch. My brother throwing a temper tantrum at age 30. It has been pretty common for him to blow up about little crap all his life. It was his youngest daughter's second birthday and he was in a crappy mood all day even though our mom and his wife had taken care of everything. It came to a head when it was about time to do the cake. It was a kind of tall cake with a carousel on the top. The dog bumped into the table and the cake shifted a little, almost knocking the carousel over. He stood up and said something like, God damn it, your freaking dog is ruining everything. My mom said, calm down, the cake is fine. He got in her face and said, don't tell me what to do be at that point my brother and stepdad got up and kind of surrounded him ready to kick his butt. He after a few seconds he finally stormed out of the house and left. I feel the need to reiterate at this point that he was 30 years old and it was his daughter's second birthday. TL. DR. My brother's 2 year old daughter was more mature than my brother. I am floored that someone like this duped someone not only into marrying him, but breeding with him. I used to live in Mauritius and there, fireworks are legal, like you can buy them anywhere and play with them any time of the year. Now there are certain dates where a lot of fireworks are used, New Year's of course, Holi, Indian festivity, as well as Diwali, also Indian festival. Anyways, my whole family is of Indian origin and we celebrate Diwali every year. I normally live in a house that includes 4 families and a total of 16 people but during Diwali, everyone directly related comes which amounts to roughly around 45-50 people. We are outside around 9pm when it's already dark outside and we are playing with fireworks. And the kids are enjoying themselves when we decide to use a specific firework. Looks like a rocket. You put it in a standing bottle and light it up. It will go high up in the air and explode. So we put one in a plastic bottle and just before it goes up, the bottle wobbles and starts falling and the firework goes straight into the neighbor's only open window. The neighbor got a house of two floors with about a bazillion windows. All closed except one and that's the one that it aims. We watch in awe and horror as it goes straight into the room with the window open and after 1.5 second the whole room lights up followed by a big bam. I crap you not. I never saw 50 people go through a small door so quickly. Here we are. At 9 p.m. 50 people poking their heads out from behind the curtains looking at the window scared shitless. The next day, we didn't come out before at least 12. TLDR. Family gatherings and legal fireworks equals bad idea. Edit. For people asking. No fire happened and nobody was injured. Thank god plus. About 12 years ago we were all at my uncle's house. Me. My siblings. Parents. Grandparents. And obviously my aunt and uncle. Grandpa was drinking some coffee with dessert when it went down the wrong pipe and he choked up a bit. My mom, being one of the biggest overreactors I've ever known assumes he's having another heart attack. He has a history of heart trouble, and flips the frick out. When my aunt tried to intervene and say that he wasn't having a heart attack and only coughing because of the coffee they got into a screaming and shoving fight. Eventually my uncle just goes get the frick out of my house. Get the frick out now. 10 minutes later we're all in the car and out of there. Up until last year they cut off all contact with my aunt and uncle and fairly recently they've talked to them, added them on Facebook, invited them to events, etc. WTF. This is like a scene from the Home Alone family. One Thanksgiving my uncle and cousins brought along their pregnant chihuahua which gave birth in my bed. My sister, whose medical credentials included high school biology, delivered the puppies. Unfortunately, none of them lived. TL. DR. I needed a new mattress. My dad died. Christmas evening, around 9pm we get to my mom's boyfriend's parents house Christmas dinner and family and all that. After going Christmas lights looking, my mom gets a call and disappears the rest of the night. 
Actually, all the adults are pretty much gone. Hey, whatever. 12 year old me throws on a movie and falls asleep on the couch. Wake up the next morning and extended family members. Family friends. All kinds of people start showing up. I remember thinking okay, what's going on? Seriously and then my mom walks out after being unseen for the whole night and tells my two younger siblings and I that my dad had a heart attack. What? Is he okay I asked. With eyes that could rip your heart out. No, baby, he died. And I remember my mom's voice choked cracked a bit on the last syllable. I remember my sister crying daddy. No, and her buying face into a pillow. But I just felt numb. Not hot. Not really cold. Just, there. I fell back into the couch in disbelief. He can't be gone. What kind of sick joke is this? Who was the world to take my dad from me? I remember walking around the neighborhood after that to get some air. Wondering how the world could just go on. How it was a nice day outside and cars passing and people smiling. The funeral was 4 days later in Dallas. 4 hours from where I live because that's where he lived at the time and died. And that's why my mom got a phone call and not his roommate at the door. He was buried on my brother's 7th birthday. I remember them standing beside the grave as my dad was lowered in. I was in the van because I just couldn't stand there and watch him be put in the ground. Sorry for the long story. Had this in my head a while. TL. DR. My old man kicked the bucket on Christmas. Was buried on my brother's 7th birthday. Edit. Thank you all for your support and your stories. I tid up a bit reading some. And it gave me some newfound hope for humanity. Keep on. Keeping on. Reddit. Like your brother's birthday wasn't already ruined by all the combo presents from being so close to Christmas. My favorite uncle was an early casualty of the AIDS epidemic. He was gay. And out long before it was in any way acceptable. Think small southern town. Late 80s. At his funeral. My grandmother was telling everyone he was a junkie that shared needles. Just to avoid admitting he was gay to her church friends. As if that were a more respectable way to have gotten the virus. I'm sorry to hear that. Our worst family story happened at my aunt's wedding. My aunt. A white lady, was marrying a Korean American man whose parents really wanted him to marry a Korean woman. During their entire engagement, his parents would invite random Korean women over for dinner to try and sway him. Eventually, they seemed to get over the fact that he was definitely going to be marrying a white girl. On the wedding day, his parents seemed politely resigned to the situation. His father actually even danced with my aunt at the reception, so we were all relieved. After dancing, his father approached the mic, and we all expected him to give a toast about how my aunt was so great that he overcame his prejudices or something. Instead, he said, in his thick Korean accent, this is abomination, like German shepherd mating with poodle. My aunt ran out of the room crying, and my grandfather casually walked up and punched him in the face, in front of 200 wedding guests. People cheered. Well, it was a series of events. But it all came to a head at my grandfather's funeral. However, I'll attempt to make this as short as possible. So a number of years back my grandfather had a stroke. No one knew it was a stroke till 2 or 3 years later. While he was refurbishing his 32 Chevy. Which he treated better than his family. Eventually he starts to deteriorate and can no longer care for himself and my grandmother can no longer do it by herself. In comes my brother who closes down the business he just opened in order to be his full time caregiver. I helped as much as I could, but I lived 4 hours away at the time finishing up college. Occasionally, his brothers and sister would come to visit, but for no more than 20 minutes before they had to scurry out the door for important business all the while telling them how much they loved him. Eventually he passes away in a peaceful manner surrounded by my family. I'm still away at this point, and reconciles with them for all the crap he had put them through. In comes his siblings who, once again shriek like banshees while mourning his death as if they had done everything to care for him. They did not. However, my grandfather said I took care of him more often than they did and I was a full time student who lived 4 hours away. Then comes the wake, or open casket viewing for those who may not know, where his family puts on a show for everyone to show their love in a public setting. Eventually things slow down and my grandmother thinks it would be nice to share our fond memories of him with those who have gathered to show their support, which we do. However, when my grandmother gets up to speak, they begin to chatter amongst themselves and abruptly leave in the middle of her speech. 
This was the last straw for my father who confronted them and told them they would no longer be able to carry his casket to lay him to rest. The following day at the funeral things went eerily smooth, although they did the whole banshee wails again for attention, but other than that his was peaceful. Then comes the final goodbyes before we lay him down to rest. All of the sisters thought it would be great to write a joint letter to my brother and grandmother who took care of him in his final days and speak their minds. The gist of the letter was that they killed him, neglected him and ignored him which led to his death. Also included was a jab at my nephew, who was 2 at the time, stating that if my brother cared for his son like he cared for my grandfather, he would have another tinier casket to deal with in the near future. They ended the letter telling us to repent of our sins and to ask God for forgiveness unless we wish to burn in heck. We don't speak much anymore with that side of the family. I was 10 and there was a family gathering at my aunt's house with a bunch of people staying over at her house. Get called into the family room and all my aunts are there looking at me. They start questioning me about my grandma's clock and whether I was playing with it, which I did. So I said yes. Turns ugly real quick. And it's an all out argument between my mom defending me and my aunts accusing me of breaking my grandma's $5 clock. They keep grilling me about whether I broke the clock, although it wasn't broken. The batteries just fell out. Fight drags out into the night. The hosting aunt brings out other instances of how I wasn't behaving. Like running my fingers through her carpet and drawing on her carpet with my finger. Eventually accuses my dad of purposely breaking her sleeping bags. Me being 10 and not understanding what this fight is actually about feels guilty that maybe I caused this whole thing because I played with my grandma's clock. And my poor mom is defending me when I might have broken my grandma's clock by playing with it. The hosting aunt eventually apologized to my mother months later. But it made things really awkward. For 10 plus years. Even now things aren't really the same. Years after the whole thing. I realized it wasn't really even about me or the clock. It was about some other crap that I don't really even understand. But my aunts used me as their point of attack. I even remember me saying all this over a clock when I was 10 during the fight, and one of my aunts insisting it was more than that implying that it was about how I was a horrible liar or something. You can't make this crap up. At a birthday party of my rich gay uncle, in the middle of the eating area filled with older gay people my little 5 year old cousin starts singing the everyone has aid song because her parents were hip and watched it with her because the movie just came out. I have never seen a little girl take command of a room like that or parents try to run across a packed room so quickly. My older brother died in his sleep when he was 16 shortly before Christmas in 2005. During his funeral, my grandfather, mom's dad, got up to speak right after my sobbing dad and said, I'm the grandfather, I just wanted you all to know that and sat down. Everyone either looked confused or extremely pee off. The reason why this was extra crappy was because we had never seen him until then. My mom had spoken about him in a very negative way over the years and told us he had left her and her siblings when they were young. He worked as a pimp and drug dealer. And he had recently gotten a 25 year old pregnant. A few months after my brother's funeral, my mom told me my uncle had been born. One of my best friends attended the funeral and he still likes to joke about my grandfather. Bonus story. Two days later my girlfriend of two years cheated on me at a New Year's Eve party. Went to a family reunion in the holler of Kentucky with folks I thought I knew. It was my cousin's or great uncle's house. I'm not too sure. And he is 80 plus years old and his family has owned this land forever. Everyone except for my immediate family was very close to them. So some like 12 year old girl in my family, who is white, brings over a black girl. Everything was fine and dandy till one of the owners saw this. He yelled at the top of his lungs what the frick is this crap. Insert it name here. Didn't build this land to have N on IT. IT ain't right. That little girl will never forget that. She had to deal with real racism right in her face and I was so embarrassed for being a part of that family and felt that I had to apologize for being associated. We left very quickly after. Comma in the holler of Kentucky. That's when I knew. We were at my uncle's house for Thanksgiving one year when I was about 7 or 8. His Irish setter had puppies that were about 10 weeks old. 
My cousins and I spent most of the morning playing with the pups until the meal was ready. My uncle put the pups in their fenced off area of the garage so we could eat. Everyone started to sit down when we heard tires screeching on the highway. We all went outside to see what happened. Turns out the puppies had escaped out of the garage. Three of them were hit by a car on the highway. Two were still alive but their injuries were pretty bad. There wasn't a vet anywhere nearby. So dad did the only thing he could. He picked up both of the puppies, grabbed a rifle, and took them a few miles away to do what needed to be done. He was very upset when he got back. My cousins and I cried for a long time. That wasn't the best Thanksgiving I've had. Not mine, but HS sweethearts. They are having a family reunion for the week in Myrtle Beach. Most of the family is gathered around the hotel pool, including her female cousin's family, husband, two young kids. A cousin's room is on the fourth floor overlooking the pool and she comes out to take a picture before coming down. When she leans against it, the metal guardrail snaps off and she plunged to her death in front of everyone. My GF says she will never forget to her own dying days the sound of her cousin's body hitting the concrete deck of the pool. The silver lining is that the kids were too young to really understand what had just happened to their mother. I have never trusted a guardrail since hearing this. Oh. My god. That's awful. Best Christmas ever. My uncle took two days to prepare a dinner at his catering business. The spread was awesome. Tons of turkey, prime rib, veggies, pies, cakes, champagne. All the family was invited. My cousin who owned a bed and breakfast showed up with 10 people we'd never seen before. They formed a line and began loading their plates up while raving about the great food. My aunt asked me to ask him who these folk were. It turned out he had charged his guests $50 each to come to an all-you-can-eat buffet. My aunt was livid. I thought she might attack her nephew for a minute. I was the guy who had to explain to the new guests this was a private party. They instantly turned on my cousin and began demanding refunds. I eventually got everyone outside and in the B&B van. But the party was ruined. My aunt has a long memory. Cuz wasn't invited to family functions for years. Someone got stabbed at my wedding reception. So, that was fun. It was my brother and sister's dad and his girlfriend who had gotten into some drunken, knife-wielding fight in the parking lot. A Dothraki wedding without at least three deaths is considered a dull affair. I'm a little late to this party, and this isn't particularly bad, but I find it hilarious. Christmas Eve at my aunt and uncle's house. About two years ago, my great aunt brought her small dog, and one of my aunt's relatives brought her baby. The baby was new to walking, and her shoes got no traction, so she was falling a lot. The dog noticed at one point, and rushed over to her and starting sniffing her. The baby absolutely loved this, and figured out that she could let the dog chase her for a few feet, fall on purpose, and get dog attention. The dog interpreted things differently, and after this had happened three times or so, started humping the baby. Fortunately, my great aunt was able to grab the dog before he got too far, while everyone else in the room was laughing too hard to be useful. I don't think the baby's parents ever found out about that. Huge family reunion at the old farmhouse that's been in my family forever, and has recently been taken over restored by my uncle and his husband. Adults are downstairs drinking their way through a small ocean of wine, children are sequestered upstairs where they will not bother anyone or hear any dirty stories. In this story I am 8 years old and, like most children, have no sense of privacy or personal space. After about 10 minutes, Cousins and I get bored with the movie we're watching and proceed to get into everything within reach, including, Wonder of Wonders a whole dresser filled with the best dress, up clothes ever, there were dresses and sequins and jewelry and high heels and feathers and all kinds of great stuff, so we decide we're going to have a fashion show. 10 minutes later, 5 small children are sashaying down the stairs into the heart of the party, totally done up in my uncle's drag queen outfits. Best. Party. Ever. When I was 9, me and my brothers along with my aunt and cousins went to the zoo. I got into a fight with my cousin of the same age and punched him in the throat. We fought over who saw the cheetah first. It was me. I saw the cheetah first. I have this one cousin. She's single and in her 40s kind of a mess. And every family gathering she has a meltdown. She always gets too drunk. Yells. Cusses. Gets up in your personal space. 
hits people, drives home drunk, breaks things, tries to give the younger kids alcohol because she thinks it's funny, and overall just causes a huge scene every time. There's always something ratchet that goes down when she's around. It's sad because she's actually very smart and funny and relatively normal when she's not drinking. She was banned a few years ago from attending any more functions unless she doesn't drink and we haven't really seen her since. It's kind of sad. Pretty tame compared to the rest but. My GF got really drunk at my cousin's wedding reception and decided to boo someone when they were giving a speech about the bride and groom. With an exit of family gathering, maybe Thanksgiving. Everyone decided to take that year's family picture around the big tractor my ex's dad owned. This thing had all sorts of attachments, including a pretty large backhoe bucket. Dad turns it on, raises the bucket a bit for the elder members of the family to sit on, then turns it off. The little kids pile up in the cab of the tractor. One of the ex's uncles had adopted this little girl who was weird. She decided to start fiddling with the controls of the tractor. Now, the tractor is turned off. But apparently the controls could still release the hydraulics. So down goes the bucket with grandma and grandpa sitting on it. Everyone starts screaming. Grandma is quick enough it get away. But not grandpa. A kid pulls the controls the other way. Thinking the bucket will lift. But it just keeps going down and pins grandpa's legs under it. Everyone is screaming. But kind of frozen until I nudge the ex-boyfriend and he turns the tractor on and raises the bucket. Grandpa is bruised but okay. Though I doubt his legs were in the same condition after that. TLDR. Weird adopted kid accidentally pins grandpa under a backhoe bucket during family photo op. That's totally the adult's fault. Okay so I have a cousin who can fart on command. There's a name for it but I cannot remember. He sucks in air while bending over doggy style and then releases said air as a fart. It's hilarious and we make him do it every time there's a family gathering. Anyway. We're all hanging out having a grand old time, when we hear his long-awaited father coming home from work to join us all for Thanksgiving dinner. He's coming through the garage which is connected by stairs and goes directly into their family room, whom only me, my brother and my farting cousin are in. Everyone else is chatting in the kitchen, so my cousin waits to the side, slightly out of view from the entrance of the door, waiting for his dad to come and so he can fart on him and we can all have a good laugh. His dad enters, he farts, freg it plop, something has exploded out of my cousin along with the fart, his pants are down, and shot across the doorway, narrowly missing his father and tacking sharply to the wall, like a spitball of crap, this was obviously hilarious so we all start dying with laughter, his father is crying and laughing, everyone in the kitchen comes into a very confusing scene, the rest of the night was normal though, just our cousins and us, shooting the crap, TL, DR, cousin farts on command and launches, collateral, hilarity, when I read this I was dying, so I showed my dad, while he was reading this I was literally bent over from laughing so hard, my dad turns to me and the most serious face shakes his head and says there is something wrong with you. I was about 10 years old at the time and we went to a restaurant for some holiday because my family was super busy around that time and no one wanted to cook. We were talking about schools and my cousin says only poor people send their kids to public school. I looked at him and said so you're calling my family poor he looked at me and just made an arrogant face and shrugged. Something as simple and stupid as this caused a rift between our families for a few years. My wedding. Leading up to the wedding. My wife's cousin gave us more drama and headache than anyone an N family has ever done. She was originally going to be in the bridal party, but she complained about not being the maid of honor. She tried scheming her way into the position and constantly belittled me and my family. Eventually, I told her she wasn't welcome at the wedding and she certainly wasn't going to be in it. She showed up at the ceremony, thankfully, quite early, and my oldest brother, also best man, alerted me and asked me what I wanted done. I confronted her and told her to leave. She refused, so I called the police and had her removed from the property. After the honeymoon, we received phone calls on the middle of the night so she could tell us how horrible we were. I filed for a restraining order and now the cousin, her mom, my wife's aunt, and an uncle that sided with the B don't talk to us. The aunt tried to hold a family meeting last year and didn't want me involved. I showed up and when she said I wasn't welcome in her house, 
My wife said then neither am I. I've heard through other people that, to this day, 4 years later, she's still talking crap about us to everyone she sees. TL. DR. B went from bridesmaid to restraining order. My aunt and uncle got caught banging in one of my grandparents spare bedrooms. Not a big deal until you find out that their respective wife and husband were the ones that found them. But beatings ensued, police were called, and thankfully that was the last family get together ever. I sent them thank you cards. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.